Hey everyone, I'm here with Legendary. Instead of Legendary, could you call me Neighborhood Renowned? Okay, sure. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm here with Neighborhood Renowned Mastering Engineer, Al Eastler. Al's, yeah, well-deserved, yeah. The whole neighborhood is clapping. Al has helped me with so many of my mixes to get them to where I want them to be. We're here to listen to the music that's been submitted to us by our YouTube community, and we're gonna give feedback and suggestions to make it the best it can be. With the aim to make everyone better better musicians, better people, better cooks. Like and subscribe. Let's, Let's do get it. into it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Anthony. Hey. How's it going? It's really right. hot. It's hot in here. It's, well, it's hot everywhere. It's summer. Who's up first? Who's so on first, deck? yeah, we have Sound of Kalima. They're looking for help with mixing, and here's what they had to say. We are a production duo who write and make our own songs as well. We happen to be best friends who have also hated each other from time to time. Trouble in Paradise. We really like this song because it's some of our most accessible stuff and it's really honest as well while being dumb at the same time. We mix this, but we're always looking to improve as we go down this path. All right, let's see what we can do to help Sound of Kalima. I like dumb stuff, by the way. Yeah, dumb. I, like, I like that they described it as dumb. Yeah, um, that, you can get away with more. It piques my interest. That. Okay. Cool. I'm getting like a Primus Ween kind of vibe. Yeah, I like that riff. It's a little, great. little dissonant, a little out of tune. It's in my blood to be a bastard and I'm great voice, yeah. You're only happy when you've got your hands wrapped all around my throat. Come on. Oh, yeah. nice transition. Step yeah, the instrumentation changes. Yeah. Come on, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're so much breaking my heart. I'm walking out. Cool. I would have wanted that to hit a little bit harder, I think. That's where I'm like, I have mixed feelings now. So let's let's, let's listen a bit more. I like where the drums came in there. Yeah, I like the change, kind of smooth, opens up. I was expecting the drums to kind of come out again there. I mean, they're doing, like, like I'm getting 90s vibes from this. I don't know how old these people are, if they consider 90s classic rock or, uh, <laughs> ouch. I guess that's where you would want that energy in the chorus to kind of come up and back down. But then if you're not trying to fulfill anyone's expectations, who cares? Like, so let's listen to a bit more. Okay, yeah, yeah. Blood. Thank you for all the years, but the way you stress me out, I'm really done. Come on. That's the pre chorus, right? Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like a pre chorus. Come on, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're so mad you're breaking my heart. I'm walking now. Have that pad. Because my best friend hates me. Maybe we should go talk about it. Blame it on my insecurities. Do you feel the same way? I doubt it, yeah. Ooh, maybe you do believe that my heart's just there to betray. And this is like the. No, it only does pre and post chorus. There's no actual chorus. No, well, the chorus is I mean, my best friend. That, that, that feels a bit like like a chorus to me. Okay. Maybe. I mean, that's how I'm hearing it. Putting in verse, pre-chorus, chorus, just they because chronologically, that's how they do. They it. must have been fighting during this. I could see why they might hate each other sometimes. Let's listen to the the back end, and then we'll kind of give our global thoughts. Yeah, yeah, on yeah. Don't ask me why. That's awesome. A little middle eight. This is the bridge. But my head's messed up and my heart's just not enough. Mm. Now my best friend I absolutely love that pad that kind of fades down. Yeah, the chorus. The chorus. Now we have an outro. Okay. 
This song takes you on a really cool journey that I didn't realize until like my third listen, which I think is really impressive. They're toying with your expectations. Yeah. Yeah, for, for me, like, fantastic job, guys. This, this, I love this, uh, this song. I wouldn't change anything about the, the, the technical stuff that they've done. It's a really good example of choosing your tones and your arrangement so that the mix just happens. Like, I have nothing to say about the mix uh, because, you know, whether you did it through heavy-handed processing or you, you're just savants with recording and, and you did a great job get capturing the tones right off the bat, I don't know, because everything just works together. It doesn't feel like it's shoehorned in there. It's just sort of, you know, tones are complementary. They're interesting. Like, the piano is interesting to me. The transition from guitar to piano, yeah, like they have a similarity. There's a, th a, a, a timbral thread between them. And changing them yeah. between sections it really makes the sections yeah. stand out. And that, that pad thing. Oh, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, go ahead. You, you love the pad. I love the pad. You love the pad. Love pad. It's the transitions to me that, that I feel like I'd want a little bit more from. Exactly, yeah. This uh, is very subjective. Making the sections stand out more would help tell the overall story a bit better. You have this sort of like low level internal dynamics going on. Halfway through the song, transitions happen. Like I'm not getting impact from it. There's always, a, like we mentioned, kind of the anti-chorus. This idea that the dynamic comes down for the chorus, which plays with, with expectations. But I think there's what I would call structural dynamics feels a little bit flat. Playing with people's expectations implies some sort of internal dynamics. It's like, I expect it to go up, but it goes down. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Or even like prolonging the payoff is, is kind of cool. And I think structurally everything's there. One part leads into the other. Nothing like, none of the transitions were jarring or awkward or weird. It's more just like little details at the transition. So it doesn't feel like here's eight bars, here's another eight bars, here's another eight bars. But just accent certain downbeats or, you know, after that pad when it comes in, yeah. just something to catch the ear and bring you into the new section. Just those little moments, you know, that's the time to use little ear candy things. And yeah, like that pad thing, you could do even more of that, like, you know. Yeah, stuff that drops out else. before it comes back in. I just felt when it came back in, you know, honestly, it could be as simple as a little volume automation thing, just for that one first downbeat to hit a little bit more and, and punch. Or it could be, like a, you know, layer a piano note underneath. I know Rick Rubin's big on that. Like section changes, just hit the root because <laughs> the piano or, goes. But, uh, you know, just a big, big low root on the piano, but mixed in really low. Uh, and it, it's more of a feel thing. Just those kind of slightly more drastic changes, I think, can help carry the listener through the whole song in a way that's a little bit more engaging and impactful, where it's like you expect it to go into the chorus and it disappoints you, it disappoints you. But if it disappoints you throughout the entire song, you end up walking away disappointed. Yeah, I think um, more extreme changes between sections might make them stand on their own a bit more, right? Heavier handed instrumentation changes that are well panned out between sections might improve it, but I, I really think that it's excellent. Already. Yeah. So if you're looking for feedback, this is really minuscule stuff mm. that might help it, but I think that you've got a great thing going. So overall, I, I really like it. And I, I just want to say thank you to everyone who submitted. We weren't able to get to every single submission, but rest assured, we value the fact that you put yourselves out on the line. Thank you so much to Sounds of Kalima. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Submit more, because like if you yeah. like this video, like it, watch the whole thing, and we'll keep doing them. You have to let us know in the comments, did they hate each other? Even if you weren't the people that wrote this song, did they? Who knows? And leave comments or criticisms in the comments below because we can take criticism too. So tell us how to do a better job with our videos about telling you how to do a better job with your mixing.